Main article. Mission to Felucia. Great Jedi Purge. I am ready now. No. You have defeated an old man and an outcast. You must face a true Jedi Master. Starkiller and Darth Vader Starkiller barely said a word during the trip to Felucia, instead looming at the back of the cockpit with his hood raised, only speaking to give orders and avoiding all of Juno's attempts to converse. Upon arrival, Starkiller questioned Juno about the emotional disturbance he felt in her. She confided in him her involvement in the bombing of Chaos, and how as a consequence of her actions, what was once a verdant jungle world had become dead and barren. Starkiller had read the reports, and assured her that she had followed her orders to the end. Eclipse landed the rogue shadow atop one of the massive mushrooms growing on Felucia, and Starkiller ordered her to wait while he charged off into the jungle, lightsaber already lit. Starkiller was quickly engaged by the Felucian natives, an entire race of force sensitives who had evidently been trained by Shark T while hiding on the world. He dealt with them quickly and efficiently, saving his energy for his ultimate target. Starkiller respected T's prowess, and her evident intelligence and skill in surviving for so long since the end of the Clone Wars. However, he considered her activities on Felucia to be disrupting the natural rhythm of the Force, i.e., the flow between the opposite forces of light and dark. The Felucian natives fought back with determination against Starkiller, looking to preserve her, regime. When confronted by a ranker riding native, Starkiller ascended the jungle canopy until he was level with the rider and leapt onto the ranker. The Felucian resisted Starkiller, though he was quickly brought down, and Starkiller killed the ranker with a blast of force lightning. From the vantage of the ranker's high body, Starkiller saw a landmark in the direction he was traveling, the Felucian village. Using the force to tame one of the river-dwelling animals, Starkiller traveled by water to the village, occasionally killing Felucian guards along the bank with force lightning attacks. Reaching the village, he braced himself against a large standing stone only to discover that it was a massive tooth. The entire village was built atop a colossal living creature. While the Felucians fled from him, Starkiller made his way towards the village center, finding it to be the more of a sarlacc. The entire town was built around a mega sarlacc dubbed the Ancient Abyss by the Felucians, and awaiting him there was Shark T. The Jedi Master was perched on one of the concentric gums of the sarlacc untouched by neither the massive feeding tentacles nor the flexing teeth, deep in meditation. Starkiller telekinetically ripped a mushroom out of the sarlacc skin and hurled it at T, who flicked it aside. She stood up, dubbing Vader a coward for sending Starkiller in his place, while Starkiller raised his lightsaber in challenge. T opened the duel with a spinning, downward strike, throwing Starkiller off balance as he backflipped and blocked. Tearing off his hood as it snagged on one of the sarlacc teeth, Starkiller could only fend off T's assault until he regained his balance. He overleaped her and fell down two layers of gums towards the Sarlacc's maw, before leaping back up. Shark T intercepted him, and her rapid attack prompted him to send a bolt of lightning into the Sarlacc's flesh below them. Its shaking and tremoring caused T to lose her footing and she leaped back from his attack. Starkiller pursued, swinging as he went. Their fight progressed towards the lower rings of the Sarlacc with Starkiller slicing off teeth and hurling them at Shark T, or slashing and shocking the flesh beneath to keep the beast quivering underfoot. T countered by taking control of the Sarlacc's distributed intelligence and sending its feeding tentacles after Starkiller. As they neared the very center of the pit, digestive byproducts from the Sarlacc's reeking maw made breathing difficult. All the while, despite the ferocious fight, T lectured Starkiller on Jedi philosophy, much to the Sith apprentice's chagrin. Finally, with their battle drawing to an end, Starkiller drove T back into the Sarlacc Moor, expecting her to be devoured, and prepared to leave. However, T re-emerged, perched on one of the Sarlacc's massive tentacles, commanding the Sarlacc to assault Starkiller. Starkiller dodged the first two massive tentacle strikes, climbing onto one of the fleshy masses as it pulled back. However, he was unable to maintain his grip, and nearly fell into the Moor, becoming pinned between four tentacles. He blasted them apart with a force repulse and launched himself back at the ground. When T charged off the Sarlacc at him, he deflected her strike and drove her back into the tentacles, blasting the entire mass with a wave of force lightning. Shark T managed to regain her feet, but she was already dying. As she began to expire, T stated that Starkiller was nothing but Vader's slave, warning him that the Sith always betrayed each other in response to Starkiller declaring his loyalty to his master. She then fell into the Sarlacc pit and died, 
exploding in a massive flash of force energy. Starkiller quietly left, satisfied that the removal of Shark T's influence would allow the dark side to again take hold on Felucia and return life to its normal rhythms. Starkiller reported his mission's success to Vader, who concluded that the time was right for both of them to overthrow the Emperor in a combined effort together. Ordered to return to the Executor, Starkiller was congratulated by proxy for the imminent completion of his primary programming.